Hello, I wanted to do a, um, a video on the subject of death, which uh, seems to be increasingly coming up in my own life uh, in the last few years. It seems like a, it was a yearly event, now it's becoming uh, about every six months or so, it seems like. Um, I wanted to talk about what the Bible says about death, uh, some of the misconceptions, the stuff we've grown up with to do with it as well as uh, the truth on what the Bible says about it. I'm, I'm not going to try not to quote a lot of Bible verses. Um, I may post a few on screen um, if I edit this later. I'm not sure yet. But I just wanted to go a general rundown on what the Bible says and I can go into more details if anybody has questions on exactly what Bible verses there are. Um, like my own experiences with death I, that I've uh, come across over the years. I mean, I watched my own mother die. She died of cancer. I was by her bedside when that happened. Um, that was really traumatic, especially for me. Um, I even, at the time, I even questioned why God would even allow such a thing to happen. Um, uh, I've later learned God doesn't cause that to happen. Um, he allows us to make our own choices, and then our own choices lead to these things happening. So, um, there, uh, we've got a lot of, uh, false doctrines out there, we've heard it all on TV and such, you know, uh, uh, you go, if you go to church, what they teach you is, uh, well, when you, when you die, uh, you go to heaven, um, uh, when you go to a funeral, they, uh, you almost always preach that you, that the person who's dead, your loved one, you're there to respect, pay your respects to. Uh, is, is in heaven. Oftentimes they'll even tell you they're looking down on you right now, uh, you know. Um, but, you know, if you ever went to a funeral and they told you your loved one's burning in hell? I've never heard it. Um, and you probably won't hear it. You know, you might, who knows. Uh, I've never personally heard of that ever happening. So, But what you... What does the Bible actually say about that? I mean, I mean there, there are atheists out there that don't believe in God. And the reason why they don't believe in God is because they wouldn't. They claim they would never worship a God that would cause somebody to burn forever and ever and ever, constantly on fire, constantly feeling that pain. They think that any God that would allow that must be extremely cruel and they will not worship that. And I can understand that sentiment a bit. Does the Bible actually say that? Does the Bible, God actually, is, does he love torturing wicked people? You know, these are the kind of things I'm going to cover. Um, you, you've seen it in the movies, you know, we went to the, we went to the movies. I've seen movies in the past where you got the, the ghost of somebody, you know, they, they died, they come back, they're a ghost. And they're at their own funeral, and they're watching people crying and looking at their own body, and uh, a couple of them where they've even entered into somebody else's body or whatever. It's just uh, oftentimes comedy and such, and some dramatic, and it uh, makes you wonder, you know, that that's the other thing. Uh, you got heaven, you got hell, you got people coming back as ghosts, uh, wandering around, spirits, you know, moving things around. It's the ghost of a loved one. Um, you know, haunted houses. I lived in places where, and I've experienced that myself, so I know that's real. I know it, it definitely is real, but it's that the ghost of a loved one is just lost, doesn't know they're dead. It's kind of difficult, I would think, to not know you're dead, but, you know, then you have to, that calls into question a whole pile of things about your mind, you know, if you die and your mind goes, or, you know, just a lot of confusing stuff out there. It's any wonder that people don't even won't believe in God or anything because of all this, all this stuff we have out there. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot of questions you might have though because if, if churches teach you that when you die, you go to you go to heaven or hell. That's the common doctrine in all the Sunday churches anyway. You die, you go straight to heaven or hell. Well, there is a process that has to happen then, right? Um, if if you go straight to heaven or you go straight to hell, how is that decision made? Which direction you're going to go? The implication there, obvious, is that you are going to be judged. Good person, go to heaven. Sit on your cloud, play harps for all eternity. Don't know how 
pleasant that'd be for me. Not only now you sit on a cloud, the uh, cloud isn't uh, is nothing more than vapor. If you've ever been in fog outside, you've experienced a cloud because the fog that's what a cloud is, it's fog basically. Um or you judge evil and you go to hell and Satan's down there and he loves it and he's got his pitchfork and everything he's got his red suit on you know and he's going around poking people ha <laughs> got you know you know like forever and ever you know I would think even Satan would get bored of doing that after a while um, but it's not bad enough you're on fire and you're burning that you gotta have somebody with a pitchfork poking y'all for all eternity right sounds like a loving God to me it's no wonder atheists don't believe in you hear that but then you got a, you got another problem because you'll also t have heard, and almost most of us have heard, when Jesus returns, he's going to resurrect the dead. Well, that leads to a whole pile of problems. If the uh, dead are dead and they need to be resurrected, then well, let me go back a step back a bit. If you die and you go straight to heaven, or heaven forbid, straight to hell then who is still in their graves that needs to be required I mean excuse me, that needs to be resurrected when Christ returns hmm? think about that if you go if everybody dies and go straight to heaven or go straight to hell who is still in their graves to be resurrected I've never got an answer to that from anybody I've never got a straight answer an answer that makes any kind of sense anyway you know uh, I, def, I have got answers to it. Let me correct that. Uh, one person told once told me, "Well, that's talking about the body, not the spirit." Well, hold on a minute. You mean my spirit's in heaven, and then my body's resurrected, and now there's two of me? It's these little people aren't working these things out logically. Um, the Bible does have something to say. There's some very interesting quotes that you will never hear an answer to, or you'll never hear the Bible. These verses quoted in the Bible. Um, then that is uh, my, my fa personal favorite verse is John 3.13. It's three verses before John 3.16. 13, 14, 15, 16. Three verses later you got the, the most, probably the most well-known verse in the Bible, John 3.16, you know, for God so loved the world. But three verses before that, only three, John 3.13, Jesus said, no man has ever went to heaven. You would think people would stumble across that verse by accident. It's in there. Now the answers I get to that are, well, Neil, that's talking about the that's talking about the the body, not the soul. Soul goes to heaven, body doesn't. That's talking about the body. Well, they can say that, but that isn't what it says. And that also proves to me they haven't actually read the whole chapter where that verse is contained, John three, John chapter three. When you read it, you know. The first thing you got to ask yourself is, why would Jesus say that? What did he really mean? Well, he was in a conversation with Lazarus at the time, who was a priest in the temple, who actually believed in him. And uh, Lazarus didn't understand um, being born again. Uh, it's it actually more of an earthly thing, and a lot of people don't realize that. Jesus was surprised that Lazarus, being a priest, didn't understand this. And Jesus had told the guy, well, if you don't understand these earthly things like being born again, then how will you ever understand, if I were to tell you about heaven, how would you ever understand that when no man has ever been to heaven, has ever seen it? So the, in context, Jesus is saying no man has ever even seen heaven. Well, that gets rid of the body, spirit, whatever form you want to talk about. No man has ever seen it, unless, of course, and I can just see the new argument. Somebody said, well, Neil, all spirits are blind, you know, so they can't see. <laughs> I don't know. I, I get a lot of excuses. People are very resistant to the truth. Why, I don't know. But in context, it makes it's even more condemning. Because not only do you say they've never been to heaven, it says they've never even seen it. And that also means everybody, before Jesus said that, back on down through history has never seen it then you got to uh, I have to get the arguments back well you know but the, what about Enoch and Elijah uh, the Bible says they went to heaven you know God took them to heaven hmm yeah it does seem to say well wait a minute open your Bible up it doesn't say that it doesn't say they went to heaven and as far as in Enoch's uh, case it says uh, God took him that's all it says took him God took him where 
I don't know. Bible doesn't tell us. God doesn't tell us where he took them. So, quite frankly, it's none of my business where he took them. But I can tell you where he didn't take them. He didn't take them to heaven. Why? Because Jesus Christ, centuries later, said no man has ever seen heaven. So, did he not go to heaven? If Jesus, centuries later, said no man's ever seen it? Well, obviously not. Or Jesus is a liar. And uh, that's not even it's something I like, like think, think about. Uh, well, what about Elijah Neal? It says he took him to heaven. Well, I'll read it again. It doesn't say it took. It said it took. It says it took him up into the heavens. The word translated into heaven in the verse we're talking about where it took Elijah it is it, that is the only point in the entire Bible that the Hebrew word is translated as heavens. Heavens took him into the heavens. In every other place, the exact same Hebrew word is used. It is translated as sky or air. Because it talks about the birds of the sky or the fowl of the air, that kind of thing. Well, the word air and sky there are the exact same word, exact same Hebrew word that was translated in air, air and sky in those verses that was translated as heavens when it talks about Elijah. It's the only place that it translates the exact same word as heavens. Why is that, do you think? Hmm, a little deception there, maybe? Actually, it's not too much of a deception. Uh, the word heavens is when you, especially when plural heaven is an only word the realm where god and his angels reside heavens is air the air above uh, the ground um space and it includes all three they're all the heavens you ever heard of you've seen something flying through the heavens you might have heard that phrase uh, that's what it means it, it was taken up into the sky well, where was he taken then? Well, you know, now, you, now Neil, you're trying to fit your own ideas into the Bible. Well, no, not because if you keep reading the Bible, and I have read the whole Bible cover to cover, if you keep reading, you'll f read a little verse later on that says Elijah had uh, sent a letter to a certain king later on. Um, he had sent a message to, the, to this king proving that Elijah was still on earth. Oh, unless you think an angel delivered a written letter for him. Uh, again, you'd have to find the verse to say that, and there's none in there. But you could do. There is a verse in there. There's Elijah sent to there. So Elijah was still on earth. He was just nobody knew exactly where he was. Obviously, somebody, a messenger, did. Well, he couldn't deliver the letter, but this was a, a well kept secret anyway. And God was giving Elijah a, a rest, and Elisha took over his duties for him. Um, but he wasn't there. He wasn't uh, in heaven. Um, it never says it took him to heaven. It took, he took him into the sky. It saved him. And he was somewhere on earth. And what happened to him after that? Well, the Bible doesn't say. He died like every, every, every other person. Um, the Bible says all men die once. This, is, this uh, verse that states that all men will die once. So Elijah is dead. Elijah is dead. Um, my personal thoughts on Elisha is that he was, God spared him about experiencing death. And because God lives outside of space and time, that he would have um, transfigured or transported or whatever you want to call it, Elisha instantly into the future. You know, and, and technically he is dead now. Well, that's just my own thoughts. I mean, I could be wrong about that. But he definitely didn't go to heaven because Jesus said, no man has been to heaven. Um, King David, for example, um, it said his, his sepulcher is with us to this day. He is still dead. They were saying he's still dead. They're all asleep. Um, that's another word that's constantly used in the Bible to, referring to death. It's sleep. It says, uh, when Lazarus died, for example, um, he, uh, he, had, uh, he was dead for four days. Jesus didn't go and help him. And uh, when Jesus went to see, uh, I think it's his sister or Martha. I think it was his sister. Um, he, uh, Jesus had had a conversation with her, and he goes, "Well, Radley he told he had told her that Lazarus will live again, and and she thought he was talking about the end time resurrection." It's interesting her response because, "Well, I know he'll rise again on the last day." So she she understood that he would remain dead until until the last day, the last day, whenever end time comes, which hasn't even arrived yet. But she didn't know Jesus was talking about then and there. He planned on resurrecting him. But Lazarus had been dead four days when Jesus went to resurrect him. 
Now, if he went to heaven or went to hell, I mean, Lazarus was a friend of Jesus, so he would he wanted people you to think, well, he went straight to heaven the moment he died, right? If he was dead and he was in heaven, he was enjoying, he was on his cloud, and he was taking his harp lessons, you know, sitting on his cloud and uh, with his Cadillac and his uh, everything gold. And he, uh, all of a sudden, he gets yanked back down into this body again. And he's got to he's got to live the rest of this life out and then die a horrible death. Does that sound like a nice thing to you? If you're in heaven enjoying it, you finally made it. You went through death. It was horrible, but you survived. You know, you made it, and now you're in heaven. And now he's back alive, and he's got to live the rest of his, you know, however many years that was, maybe another 40 years, and then die all over again. What sense would that make? No, he was dead. He was dead and he was in his grave. And he was in what the Bible, Jesus referred to as sleep. Jesus said he was sleeping. Um, and this, the word literally meant sleeping. And you can prove that by the apostles' response. When Jesus said, um, when Jesus said he's sleeping, his apostles said, well, then, then master, he'll, then he'll awaken. You see, they thought he was literally asleep. Then Jesus corrected, no, he's dead. So that that's a good passage because it talks about Jesus referring to the dead as sleeping, and then he confirms that he is talking about a dead person. And he was dead for four days, and he was still dead. He didn't go to heaven, he didn't go to hell, he was still dead. That's why he resurrected him, because he had no more life to live, he wasn't alive and wild and in heaven or anything like that. He was dead. The word dead means not alive, okay? If you're alive as a spirit being, then you're not dead, are you? You're alive, you just got a different body. No, he was dead. Jesus resurrected him back to life. He was thankful he did because he had more life to live. There was plenty more resurrections even after Jesus died. The apostles actually resurrected some too. They resurrected a young 12-year-old girl. Jesus resurrected a young boy who was being carried on a coffin by his grieving mother. She was the last son he, she had. She was a widow. He felt sorry for her, and he reached up, he touched the boy, and he came out back alive. And it's somebody who was in heaven or hell? And why would she grieve if he was in heaven? Yay, he went to heaven. You know, why would you want to avoid that? You know, It's a lot of false doctrines. On the last day, the dead will be resurrected. Now, what is death like for those of us, for, for the person who is dying, let's say, um, Lots of us know loved ones who have died uh, died of cancer is a big one. You know, my own mother. My own mother, what did she see? She was in the hospital. She was lying on her bed. She was breathing her last. She was dying of cancer. Yeah, that's not something you forget. Um, or my older brother, just last year, he was uh, lying in the hospital, and I literally watched him breathe his last. Very An experience I don't want to experience again, quite honestly. But what was what did they see? What was like for them? Well, right now they're in a deep sleep. They don't know they're dead. They're unconscious. But in, in their mind, this is what death is like. It's not a mystery. You can you can know it if you read your Bible and believe what it says, and not what the doctrines of men tell you out of these false churches. They tell you uh, basically in the person they die. You're lying there. You're breathing your last. You, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden. You die, and then in the next instant, like you're back alive. Oh, what, what happened? And you won't know it. You've been lying in dead in a coffin in a grave or whatever for hundreds, you know, of years. You know, or some Roman soldier maybe back in those days. He got stabbed by a sword. He, uh, and he grabbed his chest, and then oh, he died. And the next instant, he's like, oh, oh, what happened? To him, it'll be like, what happened? I just had a sword. I was just in such pain, and now. It was just a second ago. It'll be, that's what it'll be like. It'll just, just, just instantaneously, you'll be, you'll be at the resurrection. You won't know you've been dead. You're not sitting on a cloud looking down. You're not doing anything. You are dead. You're asleep. You're in a deep sleep. It's temporary. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Um, in the next instant, in their mind, they're going to be back alive again at the resurrection. There, there's actually two resurrections, at least. Um, there's the first resurrection, which happens when Jesus first arrives. And those are the dead in Christ rise first. Those are those who believed in Greek Jesus, who obeyed him, very important, and they are given their gift of eternal life, and that is a spirit body. You don't get a spirit body until Jesus returns. You're dead until then. That brings up the subject of ghosts, then are 
are, uh, are, are dead people walking around as ghosts. Well, no, they're not. They're dead. There are such things as these, what people call ghosts. They're not ghosts. I've experienced it. What they have is, it's either, there's only one of two things it can be. It can be an angel or a demonic spirit. That's it. Because dead people are dead. They remain dead. The idea of ghosts is a false idea. Um, it goes way back in time. I'm not even 100% sure where it started. I get some ideas, but I won't say that unless I've researched what I'm saying. But the idea of ghosts doesn't really matter where it comes from. It's false. When people are dead, they stay dead until the resurrection. So if you experience that kind of thing, then what you experience is most likely a demon because angels don't go around fooling people. You know, if an angel talks to pe people, uh, angels in the Bible generally appear as, as normal looking men. They don't have wings or halos or nothing like that. They generally appear as normal looking men. Um, the odd time they appear as angelic being bright, wearing robes and stuff. And then you know there's something special about them, but most of the time not. They don't go around deceiving you, moving cups around and such, you know, or that kind of thing. Uh, that's generally a, a demon. That's where you need to look, take another look at your life and what you're allowing into your life if that kind of thing is in, is in your life. You can pray, and if you obey God, they will be gone out of your life. Simple as that. No exorcism needed. That's a Catholic thing. Um, but anyhow, um, that that's very brief. But I just want to touch on the ghost thing briefly, because I, you hear that a lot. And just when people die they stay dead until the resurrection it's not a bad thing when you resurrect they'll be resurrected back to life the first resurrection of those who obeyed god they will when they come back alive they'll suddenly not only will they suddenly be alive they'll have a spirit body and they'll never be able to die again those are the dead in christ the second resurrection happens at the end of the thousand year reign of christ and that's when the rest of the dead are raised to judgment now judgment isn't necessarily a bad thing either god doesn't want anybody to be destroyed so they will be judged and some of those will actually make it. Some will be found wicked and contempt in, in, of God's laws, and they'll have to be destroyed. That is a punishment. God is a just God. They'll be destroyed by fire, but it isn't a lake of fire, not a hellfire, not a Catholic doctrine of a hellfire burning forever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. No, they'll be destroyed forever. The Bible states they'll be as if they were never born wiped out of existence when you're thrown into fire when they're resurrected the second time they'll have a physical body and you're thrown into a lake of fire and you what happens what happens to you is what happens happens to all flesh if it's thrown into fire it burns and it's destroyed and if you want evidence of this just turn in your bible to malachi chapter 4 it's the first few verses of it and just read it it's there it says the the wicked will be destroyed by fire and it says later after they're destroyed it says the righteous will walk on their ashes they're not burning forever that would be extremely cruel god is not cruel he is just he is fair he is not cruel um those who the wicked and that's the incorrigible wicked those who absolutely refuse i don't care even if they see god in person they just refuse to accept it they refuse to obey him and they will just god will have to be left with no other choice but to destroy them completely wipe them out of existence they'll they'll burn up and then they'll, you know screaming and painting and whatever and then poof they'll be dead and that'll be it they'll be just ashes eventually um, that's the truth horrible horrible death actually much much more hotter than hellfire the idea of hell comes from a roman goddess who was named hell with one l h e one l and it was comes from like the Catholics adopted most of their uh, the Roman Catholics. And it's just like the Catholic is just means universal. It was a universal Church of Rome. That's what the Catholic was. It was their universal religious belief that Rome had. They had a lot of different gods. One of them was Hell, goddess of the underworld. That's what they believed. You know where some of the dead went. And the and the Catholics adopted that when they created this false idea of Christianity with the Sunday and the whole nine yards and all the pagan traditions and everything, and they adopted it. And that's where it comes from. It's the name of a of a goddess of the underworld, and that's where it comes from, you know. But it's not true. It's not true. There's a lake of fire. There are the words translated as hell in your in your Bible using King James versions and such. Um, modern versions tend to not translate it at all. I don't know. I guess they're scared to reveal the truth. I'm not. 
the Hebrew word trans mistranslated as hell in the in the Old Testament is often Sheol, which means which simply means the grave. That's what it means. A grave or realm of the dead, where dead people go, the grave. Not always a grave because back then they put them in a tomb, so but it's the realm of the dead, where dead people are. Anyway, um, in Greek, which is what the New Testament is written in, um, you have a Hades, which is, has the same meaning as Sheol. Hades is not uh, burning fire. Hades is, is, is meant the same way. It's the grave. And then there's a couple of verses where it's actually translated as grave because it had no choice. If they translated it as hell, it wouldn't make any sense. So the, the, it is ver translated in at least one verse as grave. Most of the spots still. King James Version put hell. Modern versions like NIV and uh, New, New King James Version and whatnot will leave it untranslated oftentimes. I don't know, they're just afraid to. Um, another word translated as hell is Gehenna or Gehenna, and that is actually not uh, a hell again. It's not like a fire. It is a it was a valley outside Jerusalem, a dump site. It used to be where they used to sacrifice babies to their gods. Um, it's horrible. They used to take live babies and burn them alive to their gods. Absolutely horrible. Um, so they never really want. Nobody ever really wanted to build on that site. So they use it as a dump site, kind of probably appropriately. So they used to throw their trash and the our bodies of executed criminals sometimes too were thrown in there and burned. And everything in the dump was always burning and destroyed. And even when I was a child, we, used to, we still had dumps that were burnt that were burned regularly. And that was a common thing up until recently. And uh, where everything was destroyed, so Jesus referred to that as being like the end time, like a fire. Things are just thrown into it and destroyed. So that's why he using he referred to this valley again. And everybody back then, when he said that, they knew what he was talking about. Oh, that dump site, everything's burning. Okay, they understood what that meant. You know, there's a fourth word, Tartaru. It's only used once, and it was referred to uh, as a place of restraint where angels and demons were held restrained during Noah's flood, so they couldn't bother Noah or whatever. But that, that none of them words have anything to do with the Catholic idea of a hell, a never burning fire where you're constantly burning a fire. I mean, can you hold your finger over a match for one second, not even a split second? That is really painful. Now try to imagine that your whole body engulfed in flames, constantly feeling that that pain over your entire body, and then tell me that that a God that would do that is loving. That is garbage. That makes that I think it's more than garbage. Personally, I feel it is a blasphemous doctrine. It makes God out to be evil, rotten, cure, and really, really cruel. There's another aspect to that, though. In order to burn forever and never be destroyed, you have to have eternal life, don't you? Right? But the Bible tells us who gets eternal life. Only the righteous get eternal life. If the righteous get eternal life and the wicked don't, then how do the wicked burn forever? Does the wicked get eternal life as well, but just in a different place? It doesn't say that. It says the righteous get eternal life. The wicked are destroyed forever. They don't burn forever. They're destroyed forever. Because you kind of have eternal life, and you don't get that if you disobey God. So if you're thrown into a lake of fire, and you don't have eternal life, you're going to die. If you're a spirit being, you're not going to feel the fire. So what's the point? Having fire. If you're a physical being, you're going to feel it, but only temporarily, and you're going to be destroyed. Malachi 4 is clear. It's ashes. So, again, a lot of false doctrines brought into this world by the great false church. That's what the Bible calls it, or the great whore. Uh, and that's what the Bible calls it. The, this, this false church is called the whore in Revelation. It's like, it hurt the, church, the churches in this world that follow her and keep her same doctrines she does, they're called her harlot daughters. Sunday keeping churches, all these churches that believe and teach you these lies, they make God up to be cruel, vicious, rotten, when he isn't. He is just though. He is just. Those who are in cords be wicked. And we probably met a few people like that in our lifetimes. So some of them some of them might still be forgiven. Then some of them might still repent. So you gotta be careful on how you treat people. Who you call evil, for example. Um, anyhow. And the truth isn't that bad. Uh, when you when we die in the next instant in their mind, they're, they're they're dead right now. They're dead. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's sad. It's sad. But they but they are in a deep sleep. They don't know they're dead. They're not looking down from a cloud. But the comforting thing, my you probably do know a few people that never accepted Jesus, that uh, that maybe even atheists or whatever that are dead right now. 
and the, for, according to all the other churches, they would be burning in hell right now, which is nonsense. It's garbage. Actually, I, can't, I think it's blasphemous because it makes God out to be cruel and rotten, and uh, I, I consider it absolutely blasphemous and an evil doctrine. But the comforting thing is, these people aren't burning anywhere. They're just they're dead. They're long, They're with the. They're in the same state right now as everybody else has ever died. They are in a deep sleep, dreamless sleep, unconscious. They don't know they're dead. In their mind, one minute they're getting, they're dying, and the next instant they're like alive again. That's comforting. That's not bad. And and those who never accepted Christ, or maybe those who never even heard of Christ, they'll they'll be judged. They'll be judged on Judgment Day. And not all those people are that are judged. Judgment Day doesn't mean instantaneously mean oh you're gone by you know no Judgment Day means exactly what it says you're going to be judged. If you stand for for court in a court, and I've been there, and you are judged, you might be found innocent. Or you might be, uh, you might get a mild punishment, but nothing, nothing that bad. You know, um, I don't know what all punishments God's got in mind, but there, but I, I do believe there will be different forms of punishment, not necessarily eternal destruction. There will be those who will be, have to be destroyed. Uh, if you murdered somebody and you didn't repent of it, the, the punishment in the Bible is clear: death. If you, uh, that includes things like abortion and the like. Um, if you repent of that, though, good news will come to resurrection. If you repent of that, you're forgiven. When God forgives, He forgives. There's nothing you can't repent of. So if you've ever had an abortion or something like that, repent of it. You were resurrected, and the good news is the baby that you got aborted will also be resurrected, and you'll actually get to see them. So man, for all eternity, that's a good that's a good thing, right? Um, also, there's also those some people that well, Neil, what about people who never heard of God, never heard of Jesus? Do they get ready, resurrected, and judged and condemned? Is because you know it'd be unfair? Well, no. Um, I believe there are there's strong indication in the Bible that those who died and never heard of Jesus, maybe some uh, African guy or whatever in the Congo, um, who lived his entire life and never heard of the truth, those people actually will be taught the truth during Christ's reign. So they'll be given their first chance ever to learn the truth and accept it or reject it and face the consequences depending on whatever decision they make at that time so because God's not unjust he's not unfair right so that's the truth of the matter it's not a bad thing you're coming back the dead you people you know whether you believe it or not are coming back they're not burning in hell that's good news you're not in heaven being bored to death <laughs> excuse me the pun pardon my pun but I don't know about you but I personally don't want to send them kind of playing a harp for all eternity that sounds extremely boring doesn't it now, when Jesus returns, he returns here to earth. He resurrects us here on earth. We live here on earth. And those those, those who believed in him and obeyed him will actually be helping him rule here on earth. All death will be done away with. All tears will be wiped away. You'll see your loved ones again. And never again will they have any death. Never again will we have any wicked people amongst us. Scoffing, mocking, stealing. You know what I mean? This is not a bad thing, what's coming. And, and death, while it is bad, it is sad to lose somebody you love, it's coming to all of us. Prepare for it. Change your beliefs, change your life now, because this life is way shorter than you think. I'm into my 50s, and it's and years are flying by. Death is right around the corner for me and everybody else. So prepare for death. Don't, don't worry about ins life insurance and insurance and your health and care and all that sad nonsense. You should, your only insurance you should be worried about is ensuring that you are resurrected to eternal life and be careful about it. You don't have to go to churches and most of these churches in this world teach lies. Just believe in God. If you can find some place to get you baptized, get baptized, repent. And, and and try to obey and, and read his Bible. You know the, the truth of God's Bible, and I got a couple of them here. Read these, and if any man teaches you something, open it up, and verify, and make sure they're not lying to you. If what they tell you is not in here, and I'm not talking about vague little verses, they often give you clear verses. When Bible, when God wants you to know the truth. He puts it in here, and he makes it crystal clear. If God doesn't want you to murder, it says in here, you shall not murder. By the way, it doesn't say you don't, shall not kill. It says don't murder. Big difference. Anyway, different of it. <laughs> when God says he doesn't want you committing adultery, he says so. When he says he doesn't want you, whatever, he, he's clear about it. And he's clear about which day is the Sabbath, the seventh day. You know, he, that's the one he sanctified. He's clear about it. He, but when... 
If somebody teaches you something and you look through here and you find nothing of it in here, then they're lying to you. As simple as that. It's simply a lie. I don't care if that hurts somebody's feelings or not. The truth should not hurt your feelings. Make sure they're clear about it. Nowhere in here. Well, I'm not going to get into that. I actually forget it. But there are different topics you'll hear and you won't find any evidence. You'll find a whole lot of vague verses. People like to talk about dress codes and such, for example. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you you have to dress in a suit to go and go to, go to some man-made organization church on Sunday and then give them your money. Nowhere is it in there. All right? So don't judge God's based God, if you're not sure what to believe, don't just don't judge God based on the lies of men. If you're going to judge him, read through this and believe only this, and you'll find it's actually much better than you think it is. I love it. I've read this book I don't know how many times. I just love studying it. It's fascinating. The truth is fascinating. Forget the lies. Forget the lies about heaven and hell, burning forever, and sitting on clouds and harps. I mean, you're not going to get a whole lot of people believing you if you believe that nonsense. The first thing somebody who knows anything about science is like, clouds? Clouds? You know, harps? Forever? Forget it. I don't want to <laughs> play harps forever, but anyhow. I had this one to redo. I've done a video like this a while back. And I just wanted to clarify what the Bible really says. If anybody really needs more verses, I can quote more verses. I just didn't want to fill this up with a bunch of verses and stuff. But I can always do that. I can quote verses. I just like to do this off the top of my head and just do it. And uh, tell you what it says. Anyway, um, God bless. If you lost somebody recently, it's not permanent. We're all coming back. And none of them are burning right now. None of them are being bored on a cloud. <laughs> but in their mind, next instant, they'll be back. And you'll see them. And I'll see them. And uh, it'll be a great day. There's going to be a lot of tears on that day. A lot of tears of joy. You're going to hug them. It's going to be great. And it's only... Uh, Nothing. God is merciful. God is love. He's not evil. He's not cruel. He doesn't like. He doesn't take pleasure in people burning. Okay. Study God's word. Learn the truth. Don't believe all these lies.